What's good, A1 gang? Up next, we doing a story time, man. Y'all been asking for this, so I had to get it to y'all, man. But look, I'm finna go in and break down the story to y'all of when I had a five-hour standoff with the police and the SWAT team. So, this is about two years back, I would say. Just about, it probably just, probably a year and a half to two years ago. It was in the summertime, so it might be either like a year and a half ago. But... I'm in my city. I'm on the south side. It's a street called Fifth and Hayes. If y'all want some context, you go to Google Maps and type in Fifth and Hayes. You'll see a one-way street, and it was a gas station. So I pull up. I park next to the gas station. I'm waiting on my guy. He hit me up like, what's good, bro? What you on? Let me just, let me, let me just start back from the beginning. Okay, look. So it's a day. I'm, I'm out cool and kicking it. One of my niggas hit me up. He like, bro, what you on? Pull up on me. I'm like, all right. He like, I'm like, where you finna be at? He like, I'm on fifth. I'm on the one way. Meet me by the station. So I pull up on the side of this gas station. It's a one way street. It's a, a very narrow street right here. So I'm sitting right here parked as I'm waiting for him to, to, you know, he was just down the street. He was probably like a couple houses down. He just, he just had to cross over to the corner and he was probably like three, four houses down from where I was at. But, uh, so I'm sitting there parked. The police, a police officer just pull up on me in a, and like a de detect car. I don't know if y'all know what a, like a detective car is. It's not like a regular marked police car. You could tell it's a police car, but it's not like the normal looking police cars. It's the ones the detectives drive. So he pull up, he pull up right behind me. He throw his light on and he get out the car. He come up to the side of the vehicle. Now I'm thinking like, how the fuck you going to pull me over? And I'm not even driving. Like literally my car was parked. The engine was turned off. The key was in the ignition, but the, the car wasn't, wasn't running though. So I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, like, this this can't be legal. You know what I'm saying? So he walk up on the side of the car. He like, uh, he like, sir, do you, uh, he like, let me see your, basically, let me see your license and all this, you know, license registrations and all this. Now, where I'm from, we have something that's called a concealed carry permit, where if you go to a class, you can get a permit to carry a concealed firearm. So I have my permit and I have my firearm on me. Now, if y'all notice how some cars are, at the time I had a car with a front seat that where you can like kind of put the gun in between like the driver's seat, like on the side of it, like so it's just like super accessible, like right, right where you will buckle your seatbelt in. I had the gun right on the side of there. So as I'm moving to get my things, he sees that I has the gun right there. And I, I, I told him too, I like. No, I think as soon, as soon as he walked up, kind of, he damn near could see that I had the gun and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, but I wasn't trying to hide it because I got my, uh, you know, I got my concealed carry license. So he like, uh, so he asked me like, you got, uh, he started acting all, you know what I'm saying? Like he, he put his hand on his gun and all this shit. Like, hey, watch watch how you moving and shit. And then he like, uh, you got your license and registration? I'm like, yeah, it's in a uh, registration and shit in the glove box. You want me to grab it? He like, uh, just step out of the car for me. I, we'll ju I just need you to step out the car. I'm like, for what? Now, let me remind y'all, when he came up to the to the car, I only let the window down. I cracked it maybe about like this much, you know what I'm saying? Just enough so I can talk through him, you know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't no need for me to let the window all the way down. I was already feeling like, why is he trying to pull me over? And I'm parked in the first place, you know what I'm saying? So he, uh, he acting all like, you know what I'm saying? Nervous, like he want to get ready to shoot me and shit. And then, you know, I'm just being super, you know what I'm saying, trying to be as cooperative as possible at the same time without having to get out the whip or get out the car. So he telling me to get out the car. I'm like, officer, I don't understand why I got to get out the car, you know what I'm saying, just because you asking me, you know what I'm saying, for my license. I'm like, I don't been pulled over many times and I never had to get out the car just because I have my firearm on me. And he like, oh, well, I don't feel comfortable. So, you know, you're going to have to get out the car. And he started getting, like, you know, aggressive and, you know, getting all, you know, angry and shit. Start trying to, you know, get, like, you know, kind of like, you know how police get when you're not listening to them. They hate when you don't listen to them. You know what I'm saying? But I felt I was in the right. So I just kept telling him, like, I'm not going to step out the car. So off top, he, uh, no, I told him, I'm like, I'm like, you attempting to violate my rights, man. I'm not, I'm not getting out the car. Can you call your supervisor? So that's one thing y'all got to remember. Every police officer that pulls you over, he has a supervisor. If y'all feel he doing some bullshit, right there on that, at that moment, tell him you need a supervisor there. So I demanded this. I'm like, you are attempting to violate my rights. I need a supervisor here now. So he he's upset that I even asked for a supervisor because they don't know that you can, they don't know that, you know, most civilians know that you can request a supervisor on scene if you're not comfortable. 
you know, or if you feel the situation ain't going right. So eventually uh, a supervisor didn't show up right away. He called for backup. So some other officers came right away. They surround the car. Everybody, they draw their guns on me and shit. Like they see where I got, he like, he, once he tells them like he has a firearm, it's right there on his, uh, it's right there next to his hand. You know, he trying to make it seem, he's painting the picture as if I'm about to try to reach for it real quick. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like try to shoot at him or something. But this whole time, I'm keeping my hands up on the steering wheel. So I got my hands like this, just like this. Like, so say if this is the steering wheel, I got my hands backwards like this resting on the steering wheel just so he could see, like, my palms facing up. Like, I ain't got nothing in my hands. You know what I'm saying? You can't try to say I'm reaching for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because you know how they get it. If you do one false move, your ass going to get shot. So I'm sitting here in the car. Three, it's like, at this time, it's him and it's three other officers. Is one on the side right here, one on his side, and one directly behind the car. So I'm, I'm looking around. I got my hands like this. I'm looking back. He got he, all I see is the officer point his gun at we at me with a light. So I just, I'm staring into the light, but I can see he still has his gun. So I'm telling the officer that's at the window. I'm like, can you please tell your officers not to accidentally shoot me? Please. I'm not gonna reach for the gun. I'm not doing nothing. Please do not shoot me. And he, he stays standing there, you know what I'm saying, just finger on the trigger, ready, you know what I'm saying? But all this time, dude keeps telling me, like, hey, if you want this to be over with, just get out the car. And I keep telling him, I'm like, man, you, you attempting to violate my rights. So as I'm saying this, he sends over another officer. He sends over the, the, the mean officer now. Now the mean officer comes over like, all right, get out of the car. We're not going to play this game with you. You know what I'm saying? All this shit. And then I'm telling him, I'm like, hey. You attend to violate my rights. He's like, all right, we're not going to play with you. We're going to drag him out. I'm like, hey, if you drag me out of this car, you are violating my rights. So he start, he, he reached in his belt and shit. He grabbed his gloves. He get to putting on his gloves and shit like some, like some, uh, like some working gloves. Like he was about to like, you know, bust the window or some shit. So I just keep telling him, I'm like, you are attempting to violate my rights. I kept my hands right here the whole time because I'm telling you, they was itching to shoot me. Literally. He kept telling me that he didn't feel comfortable. He, he, he kept his excuse for me having to get out the car was because he didn't feel comfortable because he had, he wanted to read the VIN number that's underneath the windshield. But he said he didn't feel comfortable standing in front of the car while I had my firearm right on the side of me. So I'm telling him, I'm like, you got multiple officers here that's with their weapons drawn on me. You really think I'm going to reach for my weapon? And he still kept saying, like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not. Uh, I don't feel I don't feel uh, I don't feel comfortable with this. So now the, the mean officer, he's threatening me. He's he's. Give him, you got five seconds. He take a step back, like five, four, three, two. And I'm just saying the whole time, I'm like, officer, you attempting to violate my rights. You are about to violate my rights. So he, I could tell this got them thinking, you know what I'm saying? Cause he hit, he hit about like two and then he stopped counting. You know what I'm saying? And then he kind of like just tried to play it off and move on to like something else. Like, like talking about something different, like, um, uh, I forgot what the fuck he was saying, but then they sent over another officer. During, so let me tell, I got to tell y'all, this was a five hour standoff, literally, no bullshit, five hours from nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, till about, it was either from, it was from like nine to like two or three in the morning, no bullshit, that they had me right here with guns drawn on me outside this gas station. Literally, the police, as more, they started calling for more backup because they really wanted to shoot me, no bullshit. They start calling for more backup. Now, the police start that pull up. They start taping off the entire gas station where I was at. They typed up. They taped off the entire block with me inside the, like the radius of where, what they taped off and shit. So by this time, it's like maybe an hour, two hours, hour and a half, two hours into the standoff, and now people are starting to come outside. You know what I'm saying? So they starting to crowd up on the corners, everything. So it's this old lady. She come up. And she asked an officer, she was already standing there while they were beginning to tape it up. Now, mind y'all, two news crews came on the scene after about, after about an hour and a half to two hours of being there. Two news crews pulled up, basically saying that it was a standoff uh, between the police and somebody. But it was an old lady standing there, and she started asking the officers, like, why y'all taping it? Why y'all taping it up the scene? We're like, what y'all, y'all trying to kill him? And then he said, we're, we're trying not, uh... He said some shit like, like we're gonna try not to, and then I just hear the lady. She start like going off like, y'all don't like, don't try to kill him. Ah. Like she you know she just like a, a older, you know, one of them old ladies that ain't standing for some shit. You know what I'm saying? She gonna speak her mind, police or not. She was one of them. So she just going off on him a little bit. 
Now, it gets to about three hours in, three and a half hours in. I'm, I'm over here thirsty as hell in the car because the whole time I'm telling them, officer, you attempting to violate my rights. I keep telling them, like, they trying to make it seem like I was getting aggressive and shit like that. And I learned before I had a court, I had a case before where I ended up losing the case because I got pulled over and I felt I wasn't pulled over for, you know, the right reason. I felt like, you know, it was a bullshit stop. So I was kind of going back and forth with the officer pretty much talking shit. Well, not just talking shit, but I was like telling him he was like fucked up. I'm like, like, this is wrong. You're not allowed to do this. And I was cussing while I was swearing while I was talking to him and I was raising my voice. So when he gave me a ticket and arrested me, I went to fight it. But the judge still kept the ticket because she said I was being boisterous. I don't even I still damn near don't know what that means. But she said I was being loud and boisterous. So that's why they was able to charge me with resisting arrest for that first case. So because of that first case, I knew don't raise your voice. Do not swear. You know what I'm saying? Stay calm. You know what I'm saying? So from that, me losing that case, I knew in this situation I can't cuss. Don't get loud. Don't get aggressive. You know what I'm saying? Don't lose your cool. I kept I kept my cool perfectly. So as they trying to like pretty much antagonize me and get me like riled up, I'm just officer. You attempting to violate my rights. I'm not aggressive. I'm calm. I'm speaking to you. You know what I'm saying? Uh normally I'm 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 trying to cooperate with you. I just don't feel this is right. I feel you are attempting to violate my rights. So I just kept literally over and over and over saying damn near this same thing like just in different ways but I, i'm just pretty much telling them over and over again you attempting to violate my rights so uh now after this uh it was it was a total of five officers regular officers that came up to my car so they sent the the first the first one was the first one then they sent the the bad cop they sent the good cop then they sent over the black cop they tried to send the black cop over to do the hey man come on you it come on i'm talking to you you know he tried to use the black car with me you know pretty much like by trying to like play like he was cool and like he understood what i was on like we come from the same place like that type of bullshit but i already knew as soon as i stepped out that car they was finna whoop my ass seriously they was finna fuck me up if i got out that car so they after this point they call with in the title i put swat team but what we call the SWAT team where I'm from in my city is the hostage negotiation task force. So by this time, they called the hostage negotiation task force to come try to, I guess, like talk me out of the car or some shit. Literally, 40 officers were on the scene. I'm not lying to y'all. 40 police officers were on the scene surrounding my car. I'm talking about rifles, guns, everything. And I know the exact number of police officers because when I went to court to fight this case, and, and they give you like a document, basically like a, a paper that like says everything that happened, all the resources that had to be used, all the officers that had to come out. And it literally said 40 police officers or 40 officers were on the scene and the hostage negotiation task force. So this about like four hours in, they go, I don't know how they, how the hell they figured out who my mother was. They found out who my mother was. They drove all the way to her house, picked her up had her date well first they started questioning her she said they called her like hey your son uh does he have a history with now i didn't i didn't know about none of this she was still at her house i'm on the south side she lived all the way on the north side so once i f later talked to her and i found out what they asked her they like um uh, she said they called her like does your son have a, a history uh torturing animals or killing animals or some shit like that so she like like no what and then they like uh does he have like a history like with violence and all this other type of shit? She like, no, nah, like what like what's going on? And like, well, we have him here and he's refusing to uh get out the car or whatever. So they tell her some bullshit. So somehow they get her on the scene. She shows up there. She comes to the window, she telling me, like, oh, get out the car, get out the car. Like, you know, they 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 say they're not gonna do nothing. And I, I just look at her, I'm like, Ma, come on now. You know, as soon as I step out this car, they finna whoop my ass. She just looked like, Yeah, they they is. And then she just like kind of like walked away from the car, but they brought her on the scene to kind of try to talk me, talk me out of the car, I guess, because that's what she came trying to do. And I'm like, and she was really trying to talk me out of the car, but I'm like, Ma, why are you acting like you don't know what they about to do to me? And then once I like made it serious to her, like, like, you know what they about to do to me. Then that's when she like, okay, I know, yeah, I know what they about to do. So eventually another police officer, well, not, he wasn't the officer. He was the he was basically the head person of the hostage negotiation task force. I forgot what his name was, his rank and shit. But he came to the window. He like, man, you know, this is my first time being on the streets in 14 years. He like, you got me out here 
and I haven't been out here in 14 years. He like, man, what's going on? I'm like, I was parked right here. My car was already cut off. The officer, he pulled up behind me, turned on his lights and tried to pull me over and told me I had to get out of the car because I had my firearm. I gave the officer my concealed carry license. I gave him my driver's license. I gave him the registration. He had everything he need, but he didn't want to just take it. He had it, but he didn't want to like let that be good enough. He wanted me to get out the car. So I'm telling this to the to the hostage negotiation, the, uh, the top person or whatever. And one of the other officers, this something I forgot too. This, I'm thinking this whole time, I'm thinking I'm going to jail. No bullshit. I'm thinking I'm going straight down. So one of the other officers, he at the uh, he at my window, he like, do you really think we got all these officers here, all these cops here, and we're just going to let you go? I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, hell no, I ain't going nowhere. They finna bag my ass off this one. But when the, when the top person came to the window, when he was talking to me and everything, he eventually, I was telling him, like, I, I honestly feel they are attempting to violate my rights. I was already parked. He's trying to tell me, and then his excuse was for trying to pull me over was that I was parked too far away from the curb. Now, when y'all go look up this street on Google Maps, type in Fifth and Hayes in Milwaukee. You're going to see how thin, how narrow this street is. There's no way you could be parked two feet away from the curb. You would damn near be blocking up the street. You know what I'm saying? So I knew that was bullshit. So I'm telling that to his, to the, to the superior officer that's on the scene. I'm like, this is just bullshit. He's trying to violate my rights. And he seen that. So he's like, you know what? He said, wrap it up. I'm just thinking like, this shit about to be a setup. I'm thinking like they about to wrap this shit up and as soon as I try to pull off or, you know what I'm saying, get out the car or something, they finna follow me and, and you know, catch me wherever I'm going. So the office, the, the head person from the hostage negotiation task force, he comes back with the, uh, like after he tells them to wrap it up, he comes back with the summons. It's like a little, it's like a little thin, it look, it, it's, it, it look almost, it's, it's, a, it's like a thin slip of paper. With basically it had a date on it and a time for me to show up to the DA's office just to I guess to talk about it was supposed to be for me to talk about what happened for the DA to decide what they wanted to do moving forward. So he slipped this piece of paper through my window and give it to me. So I'm looking at it, whatever. He tell everybody like, all right, we can go. All the officers that was on the scene, they left, which was crazy. I, I, I'm telling you, all I thought I was going to jail for show for show. You know what I'm saying? Trying to. Think I could stand on my rights, especially with all those officers there. I'm like, oh yeah, they finna fuck me up. These rights ain't finna hold no weight. But luckily they did. Now I end up going to the DA's office. I think they had it. The summons was for three days after the the when the incident in traffic or after the standoff. So I showed up to the DA's office three days later. Why this bitch lock me up? Yeah. She locked me up. This bitch didn't even hear my part of the story. So we get, I show up, the officer is there. The, the original officer who was on the scene, he goes in first to talk to the DA. As he come out, him and his partner, they start, they tell me to like, get up. I'm thinking I'm about to go in and have my turn and, you know, talk to her and tell her my side of the story. He like, yeah, uh, the DA informed us to place you under arrest. I'm like, hold on. Like, what the fuck? I didn't even get to tell my side of the story. And then. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty much trying to go off about it. And then he's saying, the DA said that the reason why she feels it was uh, okay to arrest me because, uh, because my car was running and he pulled me over. Like if they were saying, if the car was stopped, if it was like completely off and he would have pulled me over, then he wouldn't have to. Well, because they say, cause the car was running that he had the right to ask me to get out the car. Now, if y'all remember, I told y'all the car wasn't running. The key was just in the ignition. Now, he tried to tell me on the car I had, my car the on the display, I don't know what it's called, like the right in the front where you're looking at like the dashboard, it has a compass on it. So it, it would show, depending on the direction you're facing, it would show north, it would show an N for north, it would show an S for south, it would show an east for west, or east for east. My bad, y'all. It'll show an E for east and a W for west. So when he came up to my car, he seen on the dashboard that it had an N. Now he mistook that for the car being in neutral. He thought that was the gear. He said, he said the car was on. And I'm telling him, I'm like, I'm like, so you going this is when we at the DA office. I'm I'm telling him, I'm like, so I'm being arrested because you went in there and lied and said that my car was running. So he started trying to go off like, oh no, this this cause I said this. He didn't like that I said this. I I, I was questioning like uh basically I was like, I was like questioning his honor. I'm like, I'm like I'm like, you took an oath. 
and you're not upholding it. And he starts trying to go off like, I am upholding my oath. I, I'm like, no, you're not. You're lying on me. I'm like, you're literally lying on me in order to get an arrest. You literally have to lie. And that was kind of like that was that was bothering him. It was striking his core because in his mind, he felt he wasn't lying. So he started trying to say your car was on. The car was in neutral. And I'm just thinking hard as a bitch. I'm like, my car was not in neutral. And I'm like, even if my car was in neutral, you shouldn't have been able to see it. And he's like, uh. He's like, I know the car was in neutral. There was a big N lit up on the dashboard. And so I'm just thinking hard as hell. I'm like, an N lit up on the dashboard? I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm just thinking like, and then it, it just dawned on me. I'm like, you talking about the, the, my compass on my car? I'm like, if you pay attention, officer, the direction I was facing was north. And when he pulled up on me and he came to the window, I put the key in the ignition. I turned the key back to let the window down. So that's why the dashboard lit up. So once you turn the key back, like I had the key in the ignition, but it wasn't turned back. So I had to turn it back to let the window down for him when he first approached the vehicle. So now when I turned the key back, that made the dashboard turn on in the direction I was facing was north. So my compass showed north. So I, I, I broke this down to him, explained it to him. I even told him about the model, the make of the car. I'm like, if you look up the car that, I, that you pulled me over in, you will see that if the car was in neutral, you wouldn't be able to see that on the dashboard. What you seen was my compass. So he get to looking stupid as hell. He just like, he's thinking for a second, like, like, you know, I could tell he had like that damn look on his face, like, damn, I fucked up. But he still arrested me. He still took me down. I asked him, could, I said, can you go back in there and tell the, at least if she won't let me talk to her, can you go back in there and tell her that you made a mistake? He's like, no. And the nigga took me downtown and arrested me. And I went to jail. I ended up fighting a case. Long story short, I fought the case. No, actually, I went to jail. I, they kept me for about a day. Then they released me. They gave me no paperwork, no nothing. It was just they said like pretty much like they dropped it. Like when I when I was asking the person who was releasing me, I'm like, so what's I don't get no papers. I ain't got to go to court. Nothing. He like, nah. So they released me. I go up north to kick it. One of my cousins. He he wants to. He's up. He he goes to school up north and shit. He's in college up there. So I go kick it with him for uh, a couple days and shit. We go out one day. We, we go to a bar. We coming back from the bar. I'm driving. A police officer, they pull me over or whatever. They run my name. Everything cool or whatever. But they like, oh, you got a warrant back in Milwaukee. I'm like, no, I don't. So they like, oh, yeah, we got a, you got a warrant. I'm like, this got to be a mistake. Like, I went to court. I mean, I went to jail for that. They let me out. They said I ain't had no court date, nothing. He like, well, I don't know. We got to take you, though. So I got arrested there. They kept me there. I'm up north arrested for a week, literally. I'm in jail for one week off some bullshit that I didn't even, that was, you know what I'm saying, that was wrong in the first place. So I was pissed. Now, the reason I had to stay up north for a week was because I had to wait for the city I'm from to send officers to come get me and take me back. Now, mind y'all, we about four hours away. So it's not like the, it was like a little 20, 30 minute drive. You know, it was a four hour drive that they would have to come get me. So I'm asking every day that they got me locked up up north. I'm like, when is Milwaukee coming to get me? When Milwaukee coming to get me? They're like, I don't know. They should be here in a couple days. A couple days pass. I'm like, when they come to get me? They should be here in a, a couple days. A couple days pass. I'm like, when they come to get me? Finally, on the seventh day, they came to get me. So they bring me back, lock me up in Milwaukee. I go to court, see the judge. Uh, they give me a new court date. I go back to court, talk to the judge. Now, the judge, this is a female judge. She's basically... And she was a black judge, too. She basically, after hearing all the facts to the story, she asked an officer, she asked him, like, so why did you feel unsafe if you had 40? Because they, they basically tried to say the reason why I need to be charged with resisting arrest and use of a, a firearm and all this other shit uh, was because they basically said I refused arrest. I, re I resisted arrest and I used my, my gun to help me not get arrested. That's why they, they had a modifier charge of using a firearm. Like, they made it seem like I actually used it, like, like as if I was holding it, like, oh, no, I'm not going to jail. Y'all ain't taking me. You know what I'm saying? She was saying to the officer, though, like, you have 40 off because they, they basically tried to complain, like, he made us use up a lot of our resources. She said, you have 40 officers on the scene with guns drawn, and you feel unsafe to check the VIN number? She like, that don't sound right to me. She said, if a car is parked, and I and after I explained to her about the, the neutral, that, like, he thought my car was in, in neutral, but it was really the compass. After I explained that, she's like, uh, she like, yeah, that don't make sense. So this is a parking situation. She said, if someone, if you have to give a ticket to someone who's parked, the owner of the vehicle doesn't have to be there. 
So if you wanted to issue him a parking citation for being parked too far away from the curb, you had no reason to even have to have him get out the car. You could have wrote the citation, stuck it in the window, especially with you having that many officers there. So she said, I feel because of that you were fishing. She told him specifically, I feel like you were fishing for something. And because of that, she dropped the case. So the case ended up getting dismissed. I beat that one. You know what I'm saying? Luckily, because they were trying to give me like, I think I was facing like three to five years off that shit. It was crazy. Like, it was crazy for real. But that's that story. You know what I'm saying? Basically, the moral of this story is know your rights, man. Know your rights. The, knowing your rights will help you out a lot. And if I didn't know my rights, they would have whooped my ass. They would have been taking me to jail. I wouldn't have fought it. You know what I'm saying? But because I had that in my mind, like, I'm not going to let them just, you know, step all over me, I was able to beat this case and, you know what I'm saying, not get something on my record behind it. Now, I did end up having to go to jail for a week, but, you know what I'm saying, some, you got to take the good with the bad, you know what I'm saying? So that's my story about a five-hour standoff with the SWAT team, 40 police officers. Hey, this is my first story time, y'all, so I know I was a little bit all over the place, but let me know what y'all want me to do next. We got a lot more story times. If y'all like this one, I trust me. Y'all think this was something? This is this is one of the the the, the PG -ish stories I could tell y'all, man. So let me know if y'all want me to get to some more. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, follow me on Instagram, and stay down, come up underscore December. A1 gang, we out.